I'm delighted to have this opportunity to share a message with the International Conference on Energy and Climate Change. And I'm indebted to my distinguished friend and colleague, Dimitris Mavrakis, for having invited me to speak to you. Dr. Mavrakis describes himself on his Twitter feed as an aspiring pirate. And I think that's a fair description for all the countless women and men who have brought the frontiers of scientific inquiry to the shores of climate change, its challenges, its dangers, and also its inherent possibilities. Because just as pirates wander into waters unknown to them, often at peril to their own lives and well-being, they too have confronted enemies, enemies which have been spurred by the moment, but enemies which have also been fostered through history. And that aspect, if you will, of benign piracy is one which I think animates the scientific and indeed increasingly the business community's view towards the ideas of energy and climate change. It's particularly fitting that this conference takes place in Athens, the home several centuries ago of Hippocrates, who spoke of climate being an essential determinant of human health, human happiness, and indeed human intelligence. And one has just to wander to the Acropolis to see the scientific design when it was first constructed in the 13th century BC, the way its columns were aligned to shelter the construction from the perils of wind, of storm, and yet bring into it as much of the beneficial sun and the energy from the sun as possible. A practice that flowed into later times in historic Greece, when, as cities began to be depleted in the supplies of fuel and energy essential to their survival, they began to construct their own dwellings and indeed the entire grids of their city in a southern face so that they could optimize the benefits that they would get from solar power. That metaphor has stood us well over these past centuries. And today, we have a formidable combination the scientific community, as I suggested, the commercial community, which is responsible for the provision and the creation and the marketing of energy, and, if you will, the two important communities that have come into their own in the 20th and 21st centuries, the global political and the global popular communities. Political, because it is governments alone who can decide themselves and working with each other to give effect to what they decide at the United Nations must be done for climate change. Popular, because governments are animated ultimately by the will, the determination, and the wishes of their people. And when people are aware and informed of the dangers they face and are also apprised of the solutions that they can foster, it is they who put pressures on their government. Many of the deliberations that you will have in the next couple of days will, of necessity, be very specific, very scientific, and to that extent, perhaps, a little abstruse, even esoteric, for the ordinary woman and man to understand. My very respectful request to all of you is at the end of each one of your papers, which is going to be rooted deeply in fact and research, Please let us know how what you have discovered or what your findings are can make a tangible difference to the life of people everywhere. Because that ultimately is what you are trying to do. That is what the United Nations is trying to do. And together, we can have a wonderful, meaningful, and above all, a far-sighted partnership just as secure and just as assured as the abundance of clean and sustainable energy that animates our planet. Thank you.